Frankie joining us today. Where are we? Frankie. Frankie. So it seems that today I'm not only joined by Alex, but I'm joined by Mr. Frankie. I feel like my cats are as much a part of my channel as like you are. It's the only reason people watch. Yeah. Um, okay, so right, pay attention now. Up. No, no, Up. don't distract yourself with the cat. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Hello. I'm here with Alex again. He's not been in the videos for, for a little while, have you? But it's been great. <laughs> he's back again because today we're going to be doing a video all about living with a non-minimalist and I thought it was appropriate to have that non-minimalist with me whilst we talk about it because I think that a lot of you who are watching probably live with a partner or family members or housemates or whatever who aren't minimalist or who aren't necessarily on the journey like you are or who aren't as far along and it can be challenging at times there have been times where we've had like little bits and spats about it and it's been frustrating for me sometimes because you want them to sort of get rid of everything just like you are and be totally on board but everybody's different so this video is for anyone who is living with somebody who isn't a minimalist and all the tips that we have from our personal experience with it yep <laughs> so the first tip that we have is to explain it to them and to make sure that they understand where you're coming from so that you can therefore lead by example rather than forcing them or suddenly doing all these things and then not understanding where you're coming from so i think that from the beginning i sort of always was talking to you about it making you understand what it is what minimalism is and right yeah yeah you watch you watch videos yeah and you go on and on and on, <laughs> and on, and on. i understood it yeah. yeah you understood it and you knew why it was a positive thing for me and when you start from that point of view, then they're not gonna have a problem with it if you're doing it for yourself. The only time it can become a problem is if you try and like force them to do it with you. If you come across minimalism and you're on your own journey, just lead by example and do all the things that you want to do. So I started out clearing out my wardrobe and clearing out my chest of drawers and sort of being more tidy around the house and not spending as much money. And you saw that as like a positive thing from the, from the start. Yeah everything was nicer and yeah you're cleaning everything up yeah and I had a lot of stuff Alex is kind of normal with the amount of stuff he has I had a lot of stuff before because I was a massive shopaholic yeah. and it's I was just would... stuff you'd collected for years yeah. and years so yeah just lead by example explain it to them don't like make it you know a confrontational thing at all or expect them to do it with you straight away but that leads on to my next point which is to include them in it so don't force them to do it do it as well be a minimalist as well but include them so make it fun and do clear outs and decluttering with them so you've probably seen my or you might have seen my video with Alex where we cleared out your wardrobe and I think that was quite a fun thing to do wasn't it that was good yeah and like good. Yeah. I think that the, the wardrobe looks way better now and it was funny when I did the KonMari method in my drawers the other week Alex came home and was like why didn't you do my drawers can you do my drawers because you really like the way it looks, didn't you? And now he yeah. can see his t-shirts all nicely. There's more space as well. Yeah, and way I more space. See, I could see all the t-shirts that I wasn't using for yeah. months and months because yeah. I just I wouldn't see them. Yeah, when they're stacked like that, you can't see them. And Alex has loads and loads of t-shirts that are like different prints and things and logos. So it makes it easier for him to pick out. And you've been wearing t-shirts that I've not seen you wear for a while, which is good. The next thing is very important. I think one of the most important things is to take it slow because everyone's different how they work and how they do things and I'm the sort of person who will find something out, learn about it and I'll easily change overnight. I'm, I love change, I embrace change. You're the sort of person who has to take things a bit more slowly and sort of process it and change over time and that's totally fine that like we're different people and everybody's different and I think that over time you'll probably become more minimalistic but for now you're kind of just, I don't know, probably. Um, but for now, you're just kind of downsizing in, 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 in areas and not shopping as much and, you know, taking it bit by bit. And I think that taking it slow is important. At the start, it was quite difficult because of the way you immediately yeah. changed. Yeah. Sort of, you, you knew you wanted to do it, so you just kind of did it. It's like me constantly trying to catch up. Yeah. That's what it felt like sometimes. Yeah. Which, um, when you've got other things to deal with. Another thing that's really helped us a lot is compromise. So... I found myself getting frustrated at times because, or wound up, because I want everything to be neat and tidy and organised and everything put away and no clutter. 
Alex is more on the messy side and sometimes has piles of clutter and like you keep things like receipts or whatever. And it's about compromising and understanding that uh, they're their own person on both sides because Alex has to compromise and be a bit quicker with the way he cleans and I have to compromise and understand that yeah there might be a pile of stuff for a day or two that I have to just kind of let you do and deal with and also like in our living room there's your xbox with wires everywhere and I kind of yeah the living room's kind of your space that you spend a lot of time in and yeah the, the, the bedroom's more like my space which, I mean it's not it's not messy though no it's, it's just um it's just the TV area. Yeah, I just wouldn't choose to have it that way, but yeah. that's that's the thing, you live with it's someone not, else. It's not really intrusive. No, this is advice anyway for living with someone in general. You yeah. have to compromise. And in our office, for example, I haven't shown you my office, but um, when I did it, I would personally not have it the way it, would, way it is. We've got a poster up and there's like Alex's little figurine things and there's other stuff there that I personally wouldn't have if it was just my office. But because it's shared a shared communal area, I put those things there for him because they're, yeah. they're your things and we live together. So yeah, compromise is really important. Another thing is don't push them to get rid of things that they don't want to. Alex is a much more nostalgic person than I am. He holds a lot more sentimental value on items. Like you have a lot of t-shirts that ha mean something to you and- uh, I keep old cinema tickets. Yeah, he keeps, there, yeah, we've got this, box. the thing that the, the camera's balanced on is full, especially a lot of my stuff too, but it's like yeah. a memory box. And Alex is just a bit more sentimental and you don't like getting rid of things as much. So when we were doing your wardrobe, I didn't push you to get rid of anything you didn't want to. We had like a maybe pile. And yeah. The, yeah, the maybe pile was very good. Yeah. That we talked about it yesterday. Yeah. Because yeah. it meant that I didn't have to immediately get rid of it. If mm -hmm. I thought, well, I quite like this old jumper, but then, you know, if a month later down the line, I realised I hadn't been wearing it at all yeah. and I've made no effort to wear it and I was like well I should probably get rid of it. Kind of ease you into it. That helped yeah. me a lot as well having that was good, Yeah, because it, it, it felt like I didn't have to, you weren't forcing me to get rid of yeah. anything. Yeah. And then I'd come to my own realisation that yeah. I just wasn't, you know, I got rid of, you know, I did that for a lot of stuff mm -hmm. that I realised just wasn't wearing. That yeah. I just had in my wardrobe just in case. There, there were loads of things that you kept that I, like for example there's this hoodie that he has that I really want him to get rid of. Horrible khaki hoodie that's fluffy and he has another fluffy hoodie. So I said oh, to him, um, yeah. why have you got two fluffy hoodies when I haven't seen you wear either of them this whole year that we've lived here. I've never been, seen him wear this hoodie, that's why I wanted to get rid of it. Because it's been the summer. <laughs> but I've let him do it because it's not winters, my stuff. So we just here along. <laughs> so yeah, it's not my stuff, so it's not up to me to get rid of, so it's up to him. So I've told him I want him to get rid of it, but it's I'm not gonna force him because it's his thing, so you just got to, if they keep things you don't want them to keep, that's just the way it is, you know, it's their stuff, not yours, so. Um, another thing I think that's really important, but having your own space. I think if you're uh, trying to be more minimal and tidy, then having your own sort of sanctuary means a lot that's decluttered, that's nice and clean and tidy and not much stuff in. That's, this bedroom now is, is that for me. It's become such a nice place for me that's so clean and tidy and it's, since we've cleared out all of our stuff, it just stays tidy so much easier. And it's just kind of the place I spend a lot of my time in and I really enjoy having that. So make sure that you have a place that is free of clutter, maybe free of the person that you live with stuff, or at least if, it, if, it, if their stuff is in it, it's organised away, that you can enjoy for yourself. And I think you have your own space as well, like the living area we said earlier is definitely, mm. probably I would say your space because you spend most time in there. Another thing that we've kind of touched on is showing them the benefits without letting it come between you. So finding something that might resonate with them that they can understand the benefits of. And I think that the thing for you that's been probably the best is like money. So minimalism really helps a lot with money, so not spending as much, not being as wasteful. <coughs> and I think you have completely understood that and that's something you know that you have to work on. So not spending as much money on food, for example, I think that's a big thing for us and toiletries. Yeah. Like the other day, Alex went out and bought more condiments and beer and I got a bit mad because I was like, you shouldn't be buying beer because we already have beer, we already have loads of condiments. And if you watched me clear up my kitchen, you saw how many condiments I had and how I wanted to clear through them. And yeah, that's kind of like a, probably the thing we've had the most arguments about. Yes. And like toiletries, he'll yeah. see some shower gels on offer and buy all of them. And I'll come home and be like, why did you buy those? Because we're trying to get rid of them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the I thing. I've done that in a while now with those. Yeah, I think that that's the thing that you understand is a benefit of minimalism and that you want to work yeah. on yourself. Yeah. And one of the last things to remember is that it's a personal journey 
and it's kind of we've talked about this amongst this video but it's a personal journey for you it's a personal journey for them what you're doing in your life you should focus on yourself and what you're doing for yourself for minimalism and how you're improving your own life and the things that you're doing that are empowering you that are making you happy that are benefiting you and focus on that don't focus too much on the other person that you're living with you know you'll start to clear out your life and they'll start to see the benefits as we said and they'll probably think how amazing it is and they'll see the things that you've done in your life that have made you happier and the type of person you've become. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed Alex being here in my video. Give this video a thumbs up. So thumbs up for Alex. Mm. Ah. <laughs> thumbs up for Alex and leave any more requests you'd like to see um, from a minimalism point of view or videos from us as a couple or anything. Just let me know what you want to see and we'll see you in our next video. Don't see more of me, less of her. Less, yeah. <laughs> Tell Alex to start a YouTube channel. <laughs> see you later. Bye. Bye.